Once again, I apologize for the heater noise, but it's middle of winter here right now. Cold in the garage, and I've got this 06 era 450 I'm working on for somebody. And uh, one of the remaining items is installing an hour meter. An hour meter is kind of a must-do, in my mind, on any dirt bike. Good for once you do a major, say a major uh, maintenance event, an engine rebuild, or even when you first get possession of a bike, if it doesn't already have one, put one on it. They're very inexpensive, and there's... They're just great to track how much time is on your bike. It'll help with resale and all that good stuff. The hour meter that I bought, got a whole bunch of them, cheap. You can get these on eBay, on Amazon, straight from you know who. This was like $10 Canadian. So I usually get a few of them at a time and every bike that rolls through here that I'm working on, I just put it on for them anyway. Cause it's, like I said, it's in my mind, it's a must do. This one for 10 bucks gets you the hour meter itself, the lead, and there's two little wee screws in here that uh, if you were to make a mounting plate, they go through here. This is it. This is all there is to it. Not much different than some of the more expensive ones you'll buy. Some of them are a, a tachometer as well when the engine's running. I don't think this one is. You'll just see this little wee hourglass thing by my thumb kind of, it starts blinking when, uh, when it's working and it's reading the, the pulses. And all you do is you wrap the one end of the lead uh, around the spark plug wire and the other end you're out and you stuff it in this guy here because it just reads the pulses going to the to the spark plug uh, cap or coil depending on your application logs time that way pretty straightforward some other stuff you might need so depending again there's so many different ways you can mount this but uh, some zip ties i'm going to be using uh, some electrical tape maybe even some heat shrink this stuff's too big but this is uh, stuff you use for when you're wiring you can get it at any uh, electronic store or even at your local hardware store it comes in different sizes but when you heat this up it shrinks down and protects uh, connections and i've got little we can get these also at most uh, electronics stores or hardware stores they're little standoffs for zip ties four-way standoffs you can see holes cut through there and it's a adhesive pad on the back so it's just a sticker uh, these tie up bundles wiring bundles usually you just pass a, a zip tie through there and you can use this as a anchor point so i got a couple of them i think i'm going to use these in this application and i'll show you where so i've got the plastics and everything the seat the gas tank's just roughed in right now it's not nothing's really secured down as you can see but i'm kind of trying to get an idea for where i want to put it uh personally on these uh crfs of this era i'm not too sure about the newer ones i'm i really like this spot down in here on the left side of the bike this flat, nice flat area right here is out of the way. You can see it without taking anything apart. And it also doesn't get crushed when the handlebar gets turned all the way in. That's something you have to look out for if you are going to mount it on your bike somewhere in this area or in this area for that matter. Make sure that it doesn't interfere with uh, the handlebar at full travel. Because when you do a big tank slap or you don't want to crush your hour meter. I've seen people mount them right here. Big open spot. That's that's fine. There's really no right or wrong answer. Just however you want the bike to look. Some people will hide it underneath this bit of plastic right here on the frame. Uh, some people will route it the wire all the way back and mount it under the seat. Kind of like in the airbox somewhere. It doesn't really matter. Just wherever you want. Uh, me personally. Uh, I, I just like to be able to see it without taking anything apart. But I also don't want to ruin the look of a a clean bike so kind of want to half hide it so I'm gonna be putting it in here in this flat spot so with that location settled upon let's get access to the spark plug wire take all this stuff off so with the tank out here got easy access to the spark plug and uh, coil here in the wire again this will be different for each bike some bikes the coil is actually in the spark plug cap itself but on this case in this case this is just a standard old uh, spark plug cap and the coil is mounted over here so all we got to do is wrap uh, that wire around this part if you go around don't go around the insulation on the cap you won't be able to read the pulses but if you go around the black part of the actual spark plug wire itself i think they say a minimum of four wraps but i go i don't know like five or six usually there's lots of uh slack to play with and then uh you tie it up nicely and clean cover it protect it and then we're gonna, just going to route the wire neatly out of the way up kind of around tied to this stuff to our uh, mounting final mounting location over here so i did end up finding some heat shrink that I'm pretty sure it works. Looks like three quarter inch stuff. So I'm going to take the spark plug cap off and start this on there. Wind the uh, wire up, cover it with this, put some heat to it, and it'll shrivel up like your nutsack in the cold. 
you're going to go the heat shrink route, you have to take the spark plug cap off to start the heat shrink on the wire. So it'll just unthread and pull off. And if you don't have heat shrink, you just wrap uh, the final product up in electrical tape and that works just fine too. Then before you start winding the wire on, slide the heat shrink over the spark plug wire. Then it's just a matter of wrapping the thing up. Just wrap it nice and tight. I'm starting from uh, the forward side, working my way back, just for the reason that I want it to finish uh, the way I have it here, pulling the wire back through, because the heat shrink that I had is a little loose. So I was using the extra girth of the wire doubling back to help hold it in place. Then you just heat it up with a heat gun or a torch like me, just be careful, heat it up evenly and it'll shrivel up and hold everything tight. Give it a quick pull test and I'm going to double wrap this one here so I can cut another piece and slide it over and it'll be extra secure. With, uh, with another layer of the heat shrink over it. With the plug in and done, you can see I've got a lot of extra slack here when all I've got to do is go to just kind of right here. So you, what you do now is you just wrap this up, fold it back on itself nicely and then tie it out of the way somewhere where it's not going to get pinched by the gas tank coming down or uh, anything else. I'll just clean this up a bit and then it'll poke through just, just enough to, to go into the actual uh, counter itself. My GoPro battery died so my apologies. Nothing really exciting to show though so I routed the cable. As you can see it comes out the, above the coil, spark plug po coil comes up through this zip tie. I've tied up my slack, just roughed it in kind of for now right there. Put the remainder fed it out through where we're going to be sitting here and I've got the, the thing dangling right here. So all you do is you just put the wire in the crack here and seat it all the way in with like a screwdriver or something. And uh, next I'm going to put my little standoffs I was showing you in here and now again you have to keep in mind too if you're going to use these sort of things that I'm using it's going to pull it off the frame a little bit. So again you want to make sure that even with that it shouldn't hit anything with that uh, handlebar all the way in. So we got to clean the area with some alcohol or some acetone or contact cleaner and uh, put those adhesive pads down. So I got these suckers mounted. Now all we got to do is zip tie the thing together. Again this is just what I have. There's different ways of doing this. You can get double sided tape. The 3M VHB stuff is perfect. The double sided tape like when that stuff's stuck it's not coming off. Don't cheap out on double sided tape though because if you do then you're going to be bouncing around and your hour meter is going to be dangling there because it'll come off especially again we wash this, these bikes all the time right and they, they it's not in a good environment uh i find this way too these pads are, are pretty sticky make sure you clean the surface and then uh just tie zip tying them on they're not going to go anywhere so. all right got her mounted up four zip ties on there she's pretty solid and uh yeah just have a general look over everything and uh Pulls her up, that's it. Like I said, uh, when this bike is running with these hour meters, this little, and, and this is the same with a lot of them out there, I've noticed, that little hourglass thing starts to blink. And uh, when the bike is running, that means it's receiving a signal and it'll start counting from there. That's it guys, it's really simple. Only like a one beer job, so you can do it. Hope this helps. Talk to you later.